Hello and welcome to the 2020 Flight Simmers YouTube channel. Uh, today's episode is going to be on the DC-6 as well as the entire next series that we're going to be putting together here. Uh, so if you're into the DC-6 or like Microsoft Flight Simulator, why don't you hit that subscribe button and tick that little bell and you will get notified on all of our future videos. So today's video uh, takes place at Nashville International. We have links down in the description uh, for the scenery that we're using. And the plane, of course, is going to be the PMDG DC-6. So uh, the first in the series today is going to be all about the EFB. So we're going to hop on board, learn about the EFB, what it does, and how it can help your life out. So let's do that right now. Okay, so as you can see, uh, we have an external shot of our DC-6, and we're running the American Airlines livery. So we have everything open right now, and as you can see, uh, back in the day of the DC-6, you would need to have many engine stands, oil pans, and all kinds of stuff going on so that they could service this beautiful beast out there uh, with these radial engines. So let's hop inside right now and learn what the EFB is, what it does, and how it can help our lives. Now, one of the first things uh, that I'm going to tell you is we're not going to be using Track IR today. Uh, makes it a little bit easier to navigate around with all these millions of dials, knobs, switches, and buttons, and levers. Uh, so we're just going to be using the mouse, and I highly recommend that you map uh, all of your keys to your HOTAS, your keyboard, or your mouse something so that you can switch between uh, you can switch between camera views quickly uh, because that's what it's going to take so first off let's go over here and hop over to the EFB and the first thing that comes up is your ramp manager uh, this is where you can turn on and off all of your external items like the oil pans and the uh, wheel chocks and tow bars and things like that uh, so we'll go ahead and turn some of these off right now and show you just exactly uh, what it looks like outside now. So as you can see everything has been removed even the uh, beautiful wheel chocks down below here. All of our engine stands. The only thing we have left open right now are the doors and uh, stairs. So we can go ahead and bring those stairs in. Alright. And while they have now come up we can go ahead and shut the cabin door and we're going to go ahead and shut the carbon holds, the main cabin exit, and bring up the stairs. Alright, so everything is up. Now the other cool thing on this particular screen, you can control all of your lighting from here. So instead of going around the cockpit and turning these little dials everywhere, uh, you can just hit off, white, uh, red, or your floodlights which makes it really handy so you don't have to navigate to find all those little knobs and switches because there are a lot of them. Uh, the next is uh, you can put what state you would like your airplane in. Cold and dark is what we normally check for everything. Uh, you can go ready to start and ready for taxi. So next uh, at the top here next to uh, ramp manager is fuel load manager. Now this is where you're going to load all your fuel for your flight plan. So if using SimBrief or something like that, uh, then that will give you your uh, total fuel on board that you're going to need to carry. And this is where you're going to add that. So uh, what I like to do is just to add and subtract right here. This will add and subtract to the tanks appropriately. Uh, so this way you don't get an off balance situation. It's always going to fill up your main tanks first. And then it's going to start filling up your alternate tanks. You would put your baggage uh, total baggage poundage down here and uh, your total number of passengers right here so you can scroll up uh, we can put 50 passengers on board and say we have 1300 pounds of cargo and once you have your fuel your cargo and your passenger set you can come right down over here and see your gross vehicle weight uh, for the aircraft today that's going to be very important to know uh, for when you go to take off because there are a couple different type of takeoff methods that you can use. We'll get into those in a uh, future episode, but uh, you do have a wet takeoff and a dry takeoff. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and uh, move to our next title at the top here, which is the AFE, and this is gonna be the 
automa artificial flight engineer. I always want to keep saying it's automatic, but it's the artificial flight engineer. And this guy will get you going and help you while you're on your flight, landing, cruise, descent. Um, so we are not going to use any of this stuff throughout our entire series. So if you want to know how to fly this DC-6 and not use an artificial flight engineer and you want to do everything yourself, we have a POH on hand and we're going to be following that, not the artificial flight engineer. So next on board is the maintenance manager and this is a excellent, excellent thing, especially when you're using um, real life scenarios and you have all the realism turned on. So this is where it will show your engine life, you can repair your engines, uh, it will show total run hours, your propeller run hours, uh, and I suggest for your first flight, uh, make sure that you turn all these and you repair everything so everything starts on zero. Engine oil is right down here, so this is where you would click to top off your engine oil uh, at the bottom here. We'll get into the gauges in a uh, later episode, but uh, if you actually look at your gauges while you're doing this and you have power to everything, uh, you will actually see the oil getting topped off. But again, for your first flight, I always recommend to top all those off, your water alcohol top off, your auxiliary oil, and your anti-ice fluid. Now you might say, what is your water alcohol? What do you need that for? Well, on your wet takeoff, that's what you're gonna use your water alcohol injection for. We'll get also get into that in a later episode. The auxiliary oil. Well, the DC-6, unlike a lot of other planes, uh, I always say you like to uh, add the oil and check your fuel because this thing burns a ton of oil, so you need to have an auxiliary oil tank on board uh, so that you can top off all of your engines while you're in flight. Uh, we can talk about that also in a later episode. Anti-ice fluid is pretty self-explanatory. You get into some icing situations, you want to make sure you have that. And then you have your total airframe hours. Uh, I think that just about covers the uh, maintenance manager. Let's go to the stress engine stress visualizer. Now, for a first-time flyer, or pretty much I use this all the time, uh, because I just like to verify that what I'm doing with the gauges, uh, with the uh, manifold pressure, with the RPM, that it's reflecting correctly and I'm doing the right job uh, and that will reflect right over here. So if you're doing something pretty stupid, uh, you're going to see this little red light pop up on you and that tells you, hey dummy, you've just exceeded what you should be doing with that engine uh, and you need to check what, you're, what you got going on. So something's wrong uh, if you've got a red light up here. So this is very helpful when you're in flight and uh, it just allows you to keep check of yourself. So the very last thing on the list here is the options. Again, I have realism all the way on. Uh, you can also adjust your tablet brightness here. Auto bright and you can also adjust here which you would like to have. Uh, so whether you want to have your GPS option, uh, which would be right here in the center, or if you want to switch to the regular radios and you can just have all radios and no GPS if you choose to go that route. I always like to fly with the GPS um, but again we could do this all manual and just go with radios it doesn't really matter uh, at this point. So I think that just about takes care of the uh, EFB. If anybody has any questions uh, go ahead and pop them down in the comments below. I want to thank everybody for joining us for this little tutorial about the EFB and the PMDG, yeah, the PMDG DC-6. So, uh, again, we'll see you on uh, the next episode. We'll be going through the pre-flight checklist, before starting checklist, and engine start. So, hope to see you on the next one. Thanks for joining us here today at 2020 Flight Simmers. Keep the blue side up. We will see you on the next one.